Welcome to the Mischief, I'm Balan, and this is Vintage Story. No, it's not Minecraft, but it's very similar to it, and it comes from uh, developers that have experience in modded Minecraft, and therefore have kind of created their own creation. If you want to check it out, I have information in the links in the description below. You're welcome to check it out for yourselves, but uh, this is kind of like me checking it out and see if you guys want to follow along for at least a short Let's Play of this. It's actually been very relaxing, a little bit scary at times, and really cool and immersive. It's reminiscent of the Terra Firmacraft mod, but it is more a vintage story mod game, I guess, because <laughs> that's the developers. Anyway, uh, I was offered this uh, as a game, a free game key from Tyron, who is one of the uh, main developers of this game, and I accepted happily and i hope that you guys might end up enjoying purchasing it uh, i will likely end up purchasing uh one for kashka as well maybe we'll end up doing some two-player at some point in the future but it's constantly in development let's get into how you can actually get this going i'm choosing single player here you can create a new world now yes you can you can choose multiplayer as well if you want uh and this one here vintage hermit hermit tales that sounds perfect you can also uh randomize the world name doesn't really matter. You can increase the world height. I'm going to keep it about the same as Minecraft. I don't see why not. You can put in a seed. I'm going to put in here uh, mischief, if I can even remember how to spell the word. And you can also choose different types of how you can play. Of course, you've got your creative world. You've got your standard one. Uh, as it says, your default survival experience and so on. Exploration for players who do not enjoy combat or a significant focus on survival. It's more on exploration and building, less on survival. Uh, and then you've got a, sur a wilderness survival one, which is you know, those that really enjoy challenging combat and survival mechanics, greater focus on that, etc. I'm actually going to go with the standard, but I'm going to customize it slightly, if only for a, a play view's perspective. Uh, now, all this is pretty much set up for a standard play uh, in here, you know, survival, realistic climate distribution. You can change it to be patchy. You can actually make it so that it's, um, uh, you know, creative and so on. Your world width, it's one million blocks. You can change that, obviously. And then you can fall off the edge of the world if you want, you know, you can set that, and so on. <laughs> you can change it so that you can have a very hot world, a very cold one, etc. Or you can just keep it so that it's, uh, you know, normal distributions. Microblock chiseling. This, if enabled, the chisel can be used to change the shape of most full blocks, which is just a really cool way of adding in sort of like a, a chisel and bits-like feature, if you're familiar with Minecraft modding. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I doubt I'll ever get to that point. But you never know, so I'm going to have it enabled just for shiggles now death punishment you drop all your inventory on death but your stuff is still there you can go back and get it provided it doesn't despawn uh yeah grace timer no timer monsters spawn 10 days before monsters appear no we're gonna have monsters spawn right away it's gonna be a little more dangerous this way you guys can see what it's like when they start showing up creature hosp hostility aggressive this, this is, yeah, wolves, drifters, and locusts will attack you on sight. Other creatures attack when provoked. Passive is creatures only attack when provoked. And creatures, and never hostile creatures will never fight back. It's basically like a peaceful mode. I'm going with aggressive. It's very dangerous. Um, about half the things that you run into will probably attack you uh, if you get too close to them. And a bunch of them will just attack you if you just are seen by them. <laughs> Creature strength, normal. 100%. This is actually really strong. I'll, everything in this game does more damage than you. <laughs> just, I mean, it, it's scary, but it's it's also good. There's a hunger rate in here, which really is important to keep track of. That's that's going to be your main focus. That and trying not to die from critters that you might have aggravated. Food spoilage. There is food spoilage, so you got to watch out. But you're probably going to end up eating most of it before that happens. There's uh, saplings for trees growing up, tool durability. I'm going to leave that as is, but I'm going to increase the tool mining speed to maximum of 300%, just so that you guys don't have to sit there and watch me chopping at a tree all day while I'm doing this, and it also means less cuts for me and so on. Coordinate overlay, world map, land claiming. This is all like you, you've got your little mini map up here. You've got uh, information that you can see about where you are and so on. There are temporal storms. There is some advanced stuff that happens in here like sci-fi type elements and this is one of them where like evil things start spawning that are very strong and they, they they're just going to kill you straight out you don't want to get in into that surface copper deposits and surface tin deposits which are the only 
you know, there are other posit deposits as well, but th that's pretty much it. I'm The only thing I really changed is the tool mining speed, but I just wanted to kind of let you guys know what's going on here. Your player health points, you start with 15. You can change that. I'm leaving it as it is, and we're going to go in. So, there. Now, let's create this world of mischief. And there we go. As you can see here, it says, Dear player, the in-game help system is still a work in progress. Please refer to our survival mode starter guide on the wiki, which is actually pretty good. If you need to look up recipes, you can hit H to open the in-game handbook, which is actually really, really helpful. We're going to close that for now. And you can customize your avatar. You start out with a pair of boxers. You are one of these little blue peoples. Uh, and yep, yeah, I've got a little like, hair knot going on and stuff. The people you might run into in this world, there are traders. They, they're they all, like, fleshy-colored. I don't know why they're fleshy-colored and I'm blue. But, hey, I guess we're some kind of space person. We're going to go with, there we go, a red shirt. And I don't want that. Let's go with some blue jeans, because uh, why not? And I want some boots. I, you can go with sandals if you want, but... I, I don't think I'm gonna go with sand. I'm gonna go with some shoes. And this is this is me. This is my person. And we're gonna confirm selection. You can randomize. There are different slots that you can uh, add in and stuff like that. If you press C, you can see your character information. You can put like armor on and whatnot. Uh, your stats, the amount of food that you've eaten in different areas. And if things are like slowing you down, speeding you up and so on, you can see your physical uh, information. But there we are. We are now in this absolutely gorgeous world that is vintage story and actually I started off on a really nice peak this is all slate gravel I turned on the information overlay on the top uh, middle there so you can see what things are that I'm looking at like this grass you can see it says here left click to collect but if I use something that is not one of those tools that it's telling me about it will just break and disappear and if I hit F5 you can see my character from behind hit F5 again I can now look around and look very like longingly into the sky it's really cool <laughs> you take screenshots and stuff but while i'm jawing on about all this my hunger is actually diminishing there are slate boulders it's the first time i've actually run into those that's going to be pretty helpful um because i'm going to need a lot of building materials to start with and these will work for substitutes a lot of people will immediately uh key like head for something like flint flint is a really good thing to start with uh, slate is probably very low key, so I can right click and right click again. And it says this type of stone is too soft to be used for napping. But I can use it, and some people might think napping, I'm going to go to sleep. No, no, no. It's something where you actually place it down, you break off the edges, and then what you have left is some kind of tool or tool head that you can then modify. So what I'm going to do is explore a bit, and we're going to see what we can find. I see some trees over here. There's dirt. If you look at this, this is low fert fertility soil. There is a farming mechanic in this, which can really be... Oh, this is so pretty. Look at the butterfly. Oh my gosh. I've never started in this kind of field before. It's really pretty. Um, but a lot of things can really be helpful. Um, I, I kind of lost track of things when I just... What I was talking about. But you can throw these uh, rocks if you want, you know, one at a time. Or you can just like... Q, or you can control Q and throw a whole stack of them, and they're going to go out everywhere. You might see things like this. There's some carrots. It says grow stage 5 of 7. You're going to want to wait for that to be fully grown. This is 5 of 7 as well. I don't think any of them are going to be fully grown, but at least they are there. What I do need to do is find some kind of napping stone that will be strong enough that I can turn it into tools. Uh, and in this case, I'm, I'm not being so lucky. Oh, black. There are black currants here. This is important. Often, your early game food will consist of berries <laughs> and cattails, but not before you get some of the um, the different uh, what do you call it uh, the the different tools that you're going to need to start with. And often, people already have started with tools. If I hit M, you can see a really expanded view of the map. I have no idea what this is up here, but that's really interesting. I also see a structure here. There's a lot of ruins that sometimes will have some items in it. it looks like this was like a volcano area. Hmm. And therefore that's why I'm finding nothing but like these soft stones that are not really that helpful. I see a rabbit over there and so on. But I'm going to explore around a bit until I can find, excuse me bunny, until I can find a bit of something to build with. Oh, there's already a trader. I'm going to eat some of these berries for now. If anything. I don't have any inventory. You start off with your own crafting grid and a result, and this is all the items you can carry. 
plus an offhand item, which you can switch back and forth with X. Usually I recommend putting a torch there. This is your expandable inventory on the r bottom right here, uh, so you're definitely going to want to increase that as quickly as possible because otherwise you're not going to be able to get anything. Um, you're not going to be able to hold very much. But here's Trader. Yeah. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, see, he's fleshy. I'm not fleshy. And he's also much shorter than I am. I didn't realize that before. But if you have any of these items, he will gladly trade them for gears, which is like the currency in here. Other, and things that he has to that he's offering to purchase are over here. Often, a lot of the things that you can buy from these guys, you can't necessarily craft. Sometimes you can. Uh, but therefore, it gives you a really good reason that's more slate stone, to uh, to actually go and find traders so that you can get this stuff. Dwarf furs. If you are finding stuff, which by the way, let's let's take a look at this. There we go. See, see how this is just some leaves and this is like some brownish bits and leaves? These are branchy leaves, which you get sticks from. If you break leaves by hand, you may get a, um, a sapling of that type. If you break the branchy ones, you may end up getting sticks, which you will need sticks for making just about every single tool there is. You don't you don't make uh, like tool handles from wood per se. You just make it from the sticks that you get down here. And if you have a, cu a question about anything that you want to know what it is, I highly recommend you press the H button and you type in what you want to look for. Like in this case, let's let's keep it simple. I will go with stick. What can I? What can I, it's obtained by breaking these items? You might get a cracked vessel with uh, that has forgeable materials in it. Then you can heat it and turn it into a torch. That's ingredients for just about all these different types of things. Oh my gosh, a long blade, great arrows, hatchets, and so on, etc. And it's just going to really be useful. A lot of this. Well, that was just a rabbit. Scared me for a second. There are wolves, and they're very dangerous. A lot of the times when you find uh, some kind of ruin, there's usually some kind of pot nearby, or multiples even, that you might find useful. Uh, and therefore you can break it, open it, just like in Legend of Zelda or something like that, and take its, con its ingredients, there it is, I see a pot up there, and perhaps make use of it. This is food! Yes, that's not food. This is a record. That's really disappointing okay well <laughs> i don't have the inventory for this uh it is resonance archive quirky tavern that's great i'm gonna throw that down i don't need that because i don't have enough space right now <laughs> we're just gonna keep going for stones i've had better starts before oh here we go loose flint usually one small gray stone and the other one is some kind of similar gray but not quite the same well equal flint oh thank goodness this is actually a really good sign all you need to do now that you have something like flint or another stone, depending upon what you find, if it's flint, you just sneak, right click, and you can start determining what you want to do uh, to make this stuff. In this case, I'm going to choose a knife blade because I need knives to harvest a lot of the other materials. But if you have other stones that are hard enough to nap, as this is what I'm currently doing, let me actually get a little bit closer. I'm going to press G so that I can zoom in and I need something to actually nap this with which means I need to have another stone of some sort in order to do it and I just realized I, I threw away all my stones do I have uh, even one of those granite ones nearby will, or not granite the um, one of these will do let me grab one of these come back over here and it's easier if you choose the right angle I press G if you want to see what I'm doing I'm actually uh, sitting down right now looking at this and you can then break away this stuff you need to have something uh, hard to smack it with I tried with a stick it doesn't work you don't need to break everything you just need to break the stuff that's in the way of this and you can hold down the button but it it doesn't always go quite as fast as you want it to if you end up breaking over here nothing nothing to worry about it's fine and if you get everything wait a minute that looks like everything it should should work hello did I oh I'm missing one there we go I didn't see that <laughs> there we go I now have two knife blades and with this I can take a couple of my sticks and I can make a knife flint knife and another flint knife and this is why I'm saying you don't have to have flint 
some stones like granite, uh, obsidian, and whatnot. If you crouch down, right click, and right click again, uh, then you know you should like shift, right click, shift, right or shift, right click, right click. Then you should be able to place those ones as well. It's just that flint is only good for this stuff. Uh, it's not it's not a throwable resource for some reason. Is that that trader again? No, it's not. Let's actually look at the map. Oh, it looks like we're going into a totally different biome and away from all these like shrubby bits. I'm curious what this was. Let, let's actually go back and explore that real briefly. Because that looks really interesting to me. Is that? Oh, that's just right next to the trader. Uh, that's just flower patch. Okay. And we've got some ruins up here. What I'm looking for is like a heavily wooded area, but I also want a lot of like... Well, not that much water, but I would like water nearby because you're going to need it for like planting as well as getting like uh, the cattails. At least that's what I call them. Uh, I'm not near the water at the moment, but let's head. Here we go. These Cooper's reeds. If you end up harvesting them, the first break will get you the um, there we go. We'll get you the cattails. And with enough of these, let's actually look up cattails and I'll show you. Click here and you can make reed baskets and hand baskets. Reed baskets are used to place on the ground like a chest in Minecraft and you can store some stuff in them. Hand baskets are ones that you can carry with you and expand your inventory, which is really important. It increases your inventory by three slots for every one of these hand baskets you have. But the recipe for a hand basket is two, four, six, eight, ten cattails. Now, why am I removing the root on this? You don't have to. If you found a spot that you're going to stay at, you probably want to leave the root there. But it's got two uses. One, you can replant it down on water or next to water, similar to like uh, sugarcane in Minecraft, because I, I do a lot of Minecraft. I'm doing a lot of references to that. Um, alternately, you can therefore eat it. So you have an emergency food source. And it's a way of transplanting these to be planted in another location, if you need to do so. Because they will eventually regrow the top of their, um, of like where the cattail is, like this little brownish bit that you've been cutting off and getting, getting that from. So I'm just going to be harvesting a whole bunch of these, and I'll be back shortly. Oh boy, okay. So I was harvesting a few berries real quick, and I ran into one of these guys. Service drifters. Uh, these these guys usually aren't around during the daytime, but there was a, uh, a nearby cave. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just getting rid of those so I can pick these up. He's probably going to leave me alone just because it's so sunny outside. That was close. Alright, all I have is... Uh, peridot stone. Maybe this will work? Yeah, it does. Alright, so I can make a spear out of this. Let's do that quick. Before I get attacked again by something. Uh, this isn't going to mean I'm safe. It just means I will have a method of actually doing damage to something. And if it's not very fast, I might be able to keep it further away from me. Um, so right now I've got 38 of these reeds. I did a lot of harvesting. So let's just put this here, and you can see my inventory is expanding as I put these down there. I don't have enough for the rest, but I can put the rest of them in here. Just closing it, they'll all go into that. I'll put that in there as well. I've got a lot of bushes, a lot of berry bushes, different kinds. It's really nice. <laughs> but in this case, I'm going to take that spearhead and a stick, and I'm going to make myself a spear, which is going to be very... <laughs> Important, especially if I got stabbed by by little guys like this where wherever he went He just wandered off somewhere, which is fine. I see another structure over here. I was heading a bit west Because um, I saw another structure and often Finding a structure I can make it my own in that way. This one's actually pretty nice it has like a little tower going on Maybe ah, there's a there's a chest. I'm just paranoid That's a tool chest what did I get? I got gears! I can trade with that trader. <gasps> I got a pickaxe! Usually you have to go through several levels to get through this kind of... St uh, different states to get this kind of uh, stuff. There's bony soil which you can dig up and potentially get some bones from. I'm gonna save this pick. This is very valuable to me right now because I can actually... Oh look, I got a birch sapling as well. Let's break this. What do I got in here? 
All sorts of stuff. I got flax fibers. Oh, these are good. So if I put all of them together, I can make twine. I'm not going to do it right now because I'll probably need them later. But this is really good. That was really good. A nice find. Uh, in fact, I need to get going. I'm seeing that the sun is starting to set. That's not a good sign. I need to make more. Uh, shoot, I don't think I have any more stones to nap with. I need some stones. Quickly, please. Please, stones. I know I've got a pick, but uh, this is all dirt and stuff. And I need to go somewhat... I'm like panicking right now because the sun is setting and it's just going to get really dark and you guys aren't going to be able to see anything if I don't get this set up quick. Um, so if I hit... Oh, more berry bushes. I'll leave it because I already have four kinds right now. I went through a different playthrough and I got like just one kind each time. Sleek gravel? This isn't helpful. Oh gosh! Ow! Oh, that's bad. That's very bad. Ow! Okay, I'm like falling further and further down and I see some kind of critter down there that I don't even want to be involved in. I'm going to actually need to mine my way out. Can I get these? These are slate stones, which are not strong enough, but I can use them to nap with. So that's a thing. Can I... Peridot stones? I thought I could... Oh, this is just soil. I'm like wasting the durability of that. Can I get rid of that? And then, no? It's not letting me? I thought that I could do this with Peridot. No, I guess not. Maybe I need multiples of it. But either way, I just need to get my way out of this hole and up above to where I was before. Just use these sticks to break the, the dirt. Whew. Man, caves are very dangerous because multiple of those little uh, drifters that you saw, they get stronger. Uh, the one that I was facing was not very strong at all. And this is all just a bunch of crap. A bunch of copper nuggets, which is nice, but unless I've got something a little stronger than slate stones, I'm not going to be able to nap anything into a tool. This is actually one of the most difficult starts I've had so far because I have yet to find a good source of stones to start with. Oh, there we go. There's some flint. That'll do. Let's get rid of that. Grab the... Wait, what? Par what? That's not what I wanted. I thought that was flint. Did I... Did it go into my inventory? It went into my inventory. Okay. Well, I can still use the uh, peridot to nap with. Let's do this. I'm going to need to make uh, an axe. Shovel. Axe head. All right. And then G just so I can get close. Have to use the tool to break it or another stone. I like to do this if it was fully daytime, but obviously I was too busy admiring the uh, butterflies that are out there. So please forgive for that. But let's take this axe head. Uh, some sticks. I don't have many left. That there. And then I can chop down the closest tree. This is pine. That'll have to do. Because <laughs> I need wood right now. It will take some time. If you look, your character does like this really cool little animation. But thankfully, uh, I increased the speed at which things get chopped down. Therefore, I can use this. Now, if I take this with that same hatchet, I can therefore make a whole bunch of firewood, oh, which is what we're going to need, as well as... Can I pick that back up? Oh, I don't have any space. I need the... Uh, let's get rid of this. I need... Plant that. Some grass. And to get that, just need to collect a little bit with this. Actually, did I have... I had grass this whole time. All right. Well, if I sneak right click, I can put this down, a fire pit, and then I can just right click to place a bunch of logs, put a bunch more in it, just because I, I want it to actually work. And I, I saved two sticks and one of these, just enough for a fire starter. So now, if I escape out of this, I can right click, sneak right click, and I'll start making a fire. Oh, thank goodness. Oh gosh, whoa, that was close. 